Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam Omar with R2Gate and this is video number two of series how to use R2Gate digital oral design. In our video, we're going to be discussing how to use digital oral design from step number one all the way up to step number 10. As we mentioned in the previous video, to use digital oral design, you use steps number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and steps number nine and 10. Under each step in the software, there are multiple functions that you could do. So in step number one, you could do the model matching and the facial scan matching. Step number two will be to fine tune the model matching and fine tune the facial scan matching. Step number three will be CBCT reorientation, digital face bow, digital occlusal plane, and soft tissue cephalometric analysis. Step number four is hard tissue cephalometric analysis. Step number five is three-dimensional smile design. Step number six is wax up design. Step number nine is quick guide and digital mounting. Step number 10 is adjusting and altering the vertical dimension and face guide viewer. In this video, I'm going to explain the DOD workflow steps. Number one, we start with CBCT reorientation. So the first thing that we do is to get the CBCT scan and reorient the CBCT scan to have a starting point for your treatment plan. Then we do the model facial scan matching in step number one and step number two in the software. Cephalometric analysis, which is step number four. Digital face bow, which is step number three. Digital occlusal plane, which is also step number three. 3D smile design, and then altering the vertical dimension if necessary. In the R2Gate digital oral design workflow, we do things in that matter. And today in our video, we'll go through the CBCT reorientation all the way up to altering the vertical dimension. First, we'll start by patient preparation and data collection. To prepare the patient for digital oral design, we first acquire a large FOV CBCT, whether 20 by 17 or 20 by 20. Then we acquire a facial scan. Through DOD, we'll discuss how we can match this patient information together to get what we call the digitized patient. As far as the models or the intraoral scans, we always get the upper model and the lower model of the patient, and we CBCT scan the patient, and we intraoral scan the patient in centric relation. Inside the R2 data folder, Create a new folder and name it under the patient's name. Inside of this folder, place all the files of the patient that includes the CBCT scan, the facial scan, the models of the patient, all in the same folder. To start a new project file, click on New Project. Enter the name of the project and click on Start R2Gate. To reorient the CBCT scan, go to step number three in the Digital Oral Design R2Gate software. On the right side, you'll find the controls for the 2D view. On the left side, you'll find the 3D view. In the middle, you'll find the CT image control, whether rotation or movement. To change the 3D view, go ahead and click on the lower right side, the icon that says digital eye, and change the filter to the filter that you prefer. I personally prefer filter number one. In the CT image control, you will find rotation and movement. Rotation has X, Y and Z, and movement also has the X, Y and Z axes. X moves the patient's head up and down. Y moves the patient's head side to 
the side and Z tilts the patient's head to the right and to the left. Move moves the whole CBCT image to either one side or the other. In order for us to adjust the CBCT and reorient the CBCT, we do this in two steps, rotation and movement. Under rotation, the first thing we need to do is we have to look at the patient from a facial view to make sure that both orbits are on the same level. If we zoom in a little bit, in this case, you will find that both orbits or both floors of the orbits are not on the same level. So what we need to do right now, we need, we need to use the control that would allow us to tilt the patient's head so both orbits will be on the same level. And that will be control Z. If I use control Z, I'll be able to make sure that both orbits are on the same plane. In order for us to create a horizontal line that would actually guide us to make 100% sure that both floors of the orbits are on the same level, I have this icon right here that says activate horizontal line control. If I click right here, I will see a red line. This red line is a line that I can move by either dragging it from the 2D view on the right side and moving it, and that would give me a fast movement, or I could just go to the 2D view, click on control on the keyboard, and through the wheel of my mouse by moving up and down, I'll find that pressing control actually slows down the movement of the line. Right now, from what I see here, I believe both lines are pretty much on the same line. So that would be the first thing that I need to do. And now, from a side view, make sure that both lateral rims of the orbits are aligned. So if we look at the image from a side view, right now I can see that both lateral rims of the orbit are not properly aligned. In order for me to fix that, I will use Y, and through Y, I can move and rotate the patient's head to the right or to the left. For me to ensure that both orbits are perfectly superimposed, look at the patient from a left view as well. Last thing that we need to do from a side view is getting Frankfurt Horizontal Plane. Frankfurt Horizontal Plane is a virtual line that runs through the superior border of the porion, which is the external auditory meatus, which is right here, to the inferior border of the orbit, which is right here. For me to do that, I have to use rotation X, and through X, I'll try to align both structures to be pretty much on the same line. And for me to double check, I could just move the red line, and by moving the red line, I can ensure that both are actually on the same line or not. Right now, I think I need to do a little bit further rotation, and then I'll move the line a little bit further downwards, and yes, indeed, right now, both structures are actually on the same line. For you to confirm, go ahead to the frontal view and make sure that both are actually correct. Now, the last step that I need to do is I need to correct the patient's midline. For me to do that, there are certain anatomical structures that we refer to. Number one will be the frontal bone and the glabella. Number two will be the anterior nasal spine, right here. So these are the structures that I use in order for me to correct the midline of the patient's face. So what I need to do is I need to go to movement, and through movement I can move the whole CBCT to make sure that it's properly aligned. For you to make 100% sure that this is the correct midline that you have chosen, look at the nasal bone, look at the glabella, and look at the frontal bone, and look at the anterior nasal spine. In a lot of cases, we'll find that the facial midline does not necessarily coincide with the dental midline. For us to confirm the accuracy of the midline that we have chosen, we could always adjust the 3D filter to be able to see the soft tissue. In a lot of patients, you'll find the patient does not have an even nose. So, what we recommend is using the filter and using the glabella as landmarks that will help us in the 3D reorientation process. And now, 
if I'm done adjusting the CBCT reorientation, go ahead and click on the lower right side of the image and click on Save CBCT Reorientation. Click Yes. Go ahead and save the project file under the name 1, which is the name that we chose at the beginning of the video for our new project file. Now our project save has been done. In step number 1, we match the model to the CBCT. And we match the facial scan to the CBCT. In order for you to learn how to match the model to the CBCT, please refer to video number one of this series, where we teach you how to match the model to the CBCT step by step. To match a facial scan to the CBCT, we do this in one of two ways. Number one, using a smile scan plus a scout facial scan. This is the scout facial scan, this little facial scan that we have here on the right side, and the full smile scan is the one that we have here on the left side. Or to use only a smile facial scan as what we have in this case, and right now we're going to demonstrate how we do both. To match using a scout scan, you could click on the icon on the lower right side that says import scout scan so you can import your scout scan from the patient folder. Here it is. And you import the smile scan from this icon on the lower part of the screen that says import smile facial scan. To explain what a scout facial scan is, a scout facial scan is a facial scan that keeps its relationship to the CBCT scan. So while the patient is being CBCT scanned, the machine acquires one small facial scan and it keeps its relationship or the same position to the CBCT. So what we do is we try to find three matching points between the scout scan and the facial smile scan. To do that, we could click on the pen icon on the bottom of the screen and find three matching points. We always prefer to choose the first point at the tip of the nose. And then we choose the inner canthus of the eye. And then on the right side, also the inner canthus of the eye. To match both scans together, we click on the Match Smile Face Scan to Scout Scan icon. Click Yes. And there you go, this is the matched file altogether. To match without the Scout Facial Scan, we import the Smile Scan twice. So on the lower right side of the image, click on this icon that says import scout scan and rather than importing a scout scan go ahead and just import the smile scan see here it is my smile scan and again click on import smile scan and import the same scan one more time now all we have to do is to find three matching points between the two scans and in this case, since it's exactly the same scan, it's going to be very easy to select these three points. Nonetheless, remember to always place the first point on the tip of the nose or in the anterior zone. Again, you could always choose the inner canthus or the outer canthus of the eye, since these are points that do not move. And then click on the match icon. So this will be the initial status for us to go ahead and correct that. We'll move on and we go to step number two. So what we have right now on the left side is a composite of three different scans. Number one will be the CBCT scan. 
number two would be the scout scan, and number three would be the smile scan. In this case, we'll go ahead and click on close or hide scout facial scan. And now I have only one facial scan that I need to match to the CBCT. For me to match this facial scan to the CBCT, I need to use the controls on the bottom. So here are the controls that I have on the bottom of the screen. I have control number one, which is axial, number two, which is coronal, and number three, which is sagittal. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'll use number one. And through number one, I'll go ahead and I'll realign the facial scan so it matches well to the CBCT. I'm going to rotate it. Then I'll use the Shazdrill view to adjust the position of that facial scan. You can also move my facial scan to the bottom, as you can see here. In order to fasten the speed of the movement, you could choose speed number three. And go ahead and place this facial scan in the correct position. Okay. In order to show or hide the facial scan, you could go ahead and adjust through alpha on the left side of the screen. You can also adjust the brightness and the contrast of the facial scan through the brightness and the controls on the left side of the screen. To confirm the accuracy of your matching, I recommend that you use number one, the T, as a reference for you to confirm the matching between the facial scan and the CBCT. Number two, use the reference planes that we use in order to do the CBCT reorientation. And number three, Make sure that the blue outline is perfectly surrounding the outline of the CBCT and the structures that don't move while the patient smiles like the forehead of the patient. After the matching is completed, make sure that you export the new position of the facial scan by clicking on Facial Export, click Yes, and name the matched facial scan, matched facial scan and then click on save. After that, you can save your project file. Next step will be to do the cephalometric analysis. In order to do the cephalometric analysis, please go to step number four in the software. The step is called facial analyzer. On the right side, you'll find the 2D view. On the left side, you'll find the 3D view. In order for us to complete the cephalometric analysis, we need to find and to see all the structures in the midline of the patient. In order to find the midline of the patient's face, please go ahead and click on the icon that says Inactivate Center Snap. With that, you'll be able to see where the midline is going to be. So now what you need to do is you need to move the blue border of that box and superimpose the blue box on top of the white line. Right now, you'll be able to see all the structures in the midline of the patient on the left side. This image on the left side of the screen is a composite view of 3D view and 2D view. In the cephalometric analysis, there are some structures that show in the 2D view and other structures that only show on the 3D view. And for that, we need to be able to see both 2D and 3D. The first thing that I'd like to do at the beginning is to change the filter to a filter that would allow me to see things a little bit clearer. So for that, I'll go ahead and I'll choose my favorite filter, which is filter number one. To start the cephalometric analysis, click on the icon on the lower right side of the screen that says activate cephalometric analyzation mode. In the R2 gate, digital oral design software, we have multiple analysis that we could do. Today we'll show Kim's analysis, which is the analysis that will show us information about the skeletal relationship, vertical dimension, and occlusal plane angle. 
After you choose Kim's analysis, go ahead and click on Next. Right now, what you will see is that the software will give you hints on which points we're going to choose to complete our cephalometric analysis. Please remember that some of these points will be on the 2D view and other points will be on the 3D view. And right now, we'll talk about each point, where it's located and which view will be the best to show that point. First, we'll start with nasion. Nasion is the point where the frontal bone meet the nasal bone. So it's this suture right here in the middle where two bones meet. To choose this point, go ahead and click on the right click of your mouse. Next point will be cella. Cella is the cella torsica, which is where the pituitary gland exists. So cella is the center of the pituitary gland. Go ahead and click on the right click the mouse where the center of cella is. Next will be orbitale. Orbitale is one of the points where we can only see on the 3D view. For me to switch to the 3D view, go ahead and move alpha all the way to the left side. And here you'll be able to see orbitale. Next will be porion. Porion is the upper border of the external auditory meatus. For you to see the external auditory meatus slightly better, please change the threshold bar on the upper left side of the screen. And here you'll be able to see porion. Just to give you a hint, it's usually located right behind the condyle of the patient. So right here is where the porion is. If you draw an imaginary circle, it should be the top of the circle. This is where porion point is. Then next point will be subspinal or A point. A point is one of those points that are better seen on the 2D view and A point is actually the deepest point in the maxilla. To remove a faulty point click on the wheel of the mouse and click yes. Next will be upper incisor root apex. In order to see that, please switch to 3D view. And right here, I can see the apex of my central incisor. Next point will be upper incisor position, which is right here in this case. Next point will be posterior point of occlusion. In this case, we do not have a posterior point of occlusion. Nevertheless, we could always choose the distal cusp of the first or second molar. Next point will be Pogonium. In order to see that point, POG point, go ahead and click on the most anterior part of the mandible. Next will be Menton. Menton is the deepest and the most inferior point in the mandible. And then the last point will be gonion. So if you draw an imaginary line that connects the body of the mandible with the ramus of the mandible, this point will be around here. And now you'll find that the software will give me the result of my cephalometric analysis. And right now I'll show you what each of these numbers actually mean. To learn how to read the cephalometric analysis, Please search this video on YouTube, Digital Oral Design Guidelines. It should be the first video that you see. After your cephalometric analysis is done, make sure that you save the cephalometric analysis itself by clicking on the Save button on the right side of the screen. Name the cephalometric analysis, click on save, and save the project itself. Before we move on to the next step, click on close, move the blue box all the way to the right side, make sure that you can see the whole 3D image. Next step, 
is digital face bow. To perform a digital face bow, go to step number three in the software, which is CBCT reorientation and digital face bow. The face bow is a device that is used to match the hinge axis of the patient to the hinge axis of the articulator. The hinge axis of the patient being the condyle and the hinge axis of the articulator is being this part right here. So in our 2 gate software, what we have done was we got this part of the articulator, we digitized it to be in this form. And inside our 2 gate software, what we do is we input this part and we try to match it to the condyle of the patient. To take a digital Facebook record, click on right view to adjust the 3D view to side view. On the right side, you'll find the 2D view. There's the axial, sagittal, and coronal views. In the middle of each view, you will find a cross. We need to make sure that we move this cross and we place it when, where the condyle of the patient is. You could do that by clicking on the cross and dragging it with the mouse, or you could keep your mouse on the 2D view and using your keyboard, Click on the buttons W to move up, A to move to the back, S to move downwards, and D to move to the right. In this case, I'll place it closest to the condyler position as possible, and then I'll fine tune my placement by using the keyboard. To get an ideal placement for your digital face bow, Make sure that you have placed your cross where the widest portion of the condyle is. To find the widest portion of the condyle, move your mouse to the second 2D view, which is the sagittal view. Move up and down while keeping your eye on the first view, which is the axial view right here. And right now, I was able to locate the widest portion of the condyle. Also, make sure that the dotted line is cutting through exactly the center and the middle of the condyle, as you can see right here. If it's not cutting through the middle of the condyle, you can always move it by using the keyboards and move to the back or to the front. Now that you have set your digital face bow in the center or the medial pole of the condyle, go ahead and click on Import. Once you click on import, you'll find a list of the different articulators that we have inside the R2Gate system. Some of those articulators are the SAM articulator, R2 articulator, cable articulator, digital spacey, and bioart articulator. For demonstration purposes, in this case, I'm going to use the bioart articulator. Go ahead and double click that. Once you double click, on the BioArt Articulator, now you'll find that the articulator hinge axis has been placed where the condyler position of the patient is. What you're seeing right now in front of you, number one, the hinge axis of the articulator, number two, the mounting platform or the mounting ring of the articulator, and number three, this line right here that represents Frankfurt Horizontal Plane. And this line is really important for us when we're trying to match the digital face bow to the digital articulator later on. This blue line, or what we call the reference line, is based on the type of articulator you're using. If you are using an articulator that uses Frankfurt Horizontal Plane as a reference, like for instance the Artix articulator or the BioArt articulator, keep the placement of this reference plane as it is. If you're using another type of articulator, like the cable articulator that uses scamper line as a reference plane, you could go ahead and adjust this line by clicking on rotation and adjusting this reference plane to be parallel to the reference plane used by your articulator. For instance, in the cable articulator, would use camper line as a reference.
But if you're using an articulator that uses Frankfurt horizontal plane as the reference plane, go ahead and keep that at zero. To export your digital facebow, click on export on the middle part of the screen. And now the software has extracted this file as an SDL file and you'll be able to see it in the patient's folder. To find the digital facebow SDL file, go back to the R2Gate connector, double click on the case on the left side, open the first project folder, Inside of there, you'll find the Bayart Articulator and you'll find the upper model of the patient. And this is what you use to mount this case in the digital articulator in your CAT soft. To set a digital occlusal plane, use step number three as well. Look at the patient from a side view, and now we will move the cross and we'll place it where the incisal edge of the frontal incisor is. Click on import, and now you will find three different occlusal planes, one that says 220R, 200R and 180. R stands for radius. So 220 is a wide occlusal plane that is usually used with brachy patients. 200 occlusal plane is normal patients and 180 is what we use for dulico or long face patients with narrow occlusal planes. In this case I'm going to use the 200 occlusal plane. And right now I can see that my occlusal plane has been imported into the R2Gate software. Right now what I need to do is I need to adjust this occlusal plane. And for me to adjust the occlusal plane, I will use the functions of the rotation and movement. X moves the occlusal plane up and down. Z will tilt the occlusal plane to the right or to the left. In this case, what I will do is I'll move the occlusal plane downwards slightly since the four anterior teeth are slightly compromised. These are reduced teeth. So what I will do in this case is I'll move the occlusal plane on the y-axis and I'll keep the occlusal plane at the same level of my canines. That will give me enough length for me to be able to restore the front teeth. What about the angle of the occlusal plane? How would I know that this is the correct angle that I need to use for my occlusal plane? In order for us to select the proper angle of the occlusal plane, we could always refer back to this phallometric analysis that we have done at the beginning of the case. Go back to step number four. Adjust the 3D view so you can see where the midline is. Click on cephalometric analysis to activate your cephalometric analysis. Right now in the cephalometric analysis, I can see the angle of the occlusal plane that is currently existing before adjustment, and I can see my digital occlusal plane in dark blue. Since we have changed the incisor position, go ahead and move the first point to where the current new point is. Set the angle of the occlusal plane to about 9 degrees and adjust your digital occlusal plane to be parallel to this line. In this case, I need to raise my occlusal plane up a little bit from the back. So I'll go back to step number three and through rotation, I'll go ahead and move that up slightly. To confirm, open the cephalometric analysis one more time. And right now, you'll find that this angle that we have right now for the occlusal plane 
will be the proper angle that we need to restore this patient back to. To export this new occlusal plane, go ahead and click on export. For two-dimensional and three-dimensional smile design, go to step number five, digital oral design. In the right side of the image, you'll find either 2D or 3D. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do a three-dimensional smile design using a facial scan. Click on 3D and click on load image. Go ahead and click on matched facial scan. This is the same facial scan that you have matched at the beginning of the video. Go ahead and click on apply. And right now you'll be able to find the patient's facial scan. To show or hide the facial scan, from the right side you'll find alpha. And right now the view that we have in the middle is a composite view of the CBCT, facial scan, and the model of the patient. To start the smile design process, on the lower right corner of the screen you'll find activate smile edit. Go ahead and click on OK and cut the smile line of the patient. Add dots by right clicking on the mouse. Last click is a double click. And click on the cut the smile area icon on the lower right side. Click on yes. And click one more time on the activate smile edit mode to remove the dots. Right now you'll be able to see the facial scan without the teeth. To import a tooth library, go ahead and click on this icon on the bottom of the screen. You will have four different selections to four different shapes of teeth. Oval, rectangular, square, and triangular. Let's start with the triangular shape. Click on apply. And right now you'll find that the teeth has been imported in the software. To adjust the smile of the patient, first I recommend that you hide the facial scan, hide the CBCT scan, and look at it from an inferior view. Moving the new smile and superimposing it on the current teeth is the first step for your smile design. To move the teeth, we could use either rotation or movement. This could be accomplished by either dragging the bar that says Z, like this, or by clicking on the teeth on the 3D view and moving them with the controls on the keyboard W, A, S, D, E, and Q. Look at it one more time from a facial view. Move the teeth upwards. Look at the teeth from a side view and rotate the teeth if necessary. You can also import the digital occlusal plane that you have previously created by going to step number one and clicking on the import supporting list file and opening the occlusal plane. We'll go back to step number five. And right now, I will be able to see the relationship of the teeth to the occlusal plane that I have set. I'll set the teeth to be on the same level as the occlusal plane. And now I can scale the teeth and resize them by using the controls on the right side of the image. X scales in the side direction. Y elongates the teeth. X, Y, Z enlarges the teeth in all different axes. To change the shape of the teeth, click on Select Teeth Library.
By using the facial scan of the patient, we can check and see how the three-dimensional smile design looks on the patient's face. You could look at it from a facial view, check from a side view, You could show or hide the model of the patient by clicking on the box on the left side. You can show or hide the occlusal plane that you have imported as a supporting list file from the left side as well. You could show or hide the teeth by using the alpha on the upper right side of the image. You could change the shadow of the teeth by using the bar on the bottom. You can export the three-dimensional smile design by clicking on SDL export on the upper right side of the image. And now go ahead and click on project save. In case you need to open the vertical of the patient's mouth, go to step number 10. Step number 10 is called face guide. Start by importing the models of the patient by clicking on this icon on the bottom that says import SDL file. Import the upper model of the patient. And then import the lower model of the patient. Since we're going to be opening the patient's vertical, I prefer to open it in centric relation. So here I have the lower jaw mounted in centric relation and this is what I will choose to open my vertical. And now I have both upper and lower models. Click on the right view to see the models from my right side. Click on the lower model and click on activate local guide mode. And then go ahead and move the cross and place it where the condyler position of the patient is. You can always adjust the position of the cross by moving it from the second view, which is the sagittal view, and moving up and down by using the W, A, S, and D on the keyboard. To move the arrow further towards the posterior, you could also use the controls on the keyboard. And now what I need to do is I need to move the line until it cuts both sides of the condyle at once. And now right click on the model and click on SDL attach, you'll find that the model will turn orange. And now, put your mouse on the 2D view and by clicking Q and E, you could either close or open the vertical of the patient's mouth based on their condyler position. You can open it with increments of half a degree or half a millimeter. To export the new position of the jaw, go ahead and click on SDL export and call it lower opened vertical. Click on save. Right now, these are all the files that have been exported from the R2Gate software and you can use them to start your full mouth rehabilitation. So let's go ahead and check the files together. Number one, I'll open the upper jaw. Number two, the BioArt Articulator Digital Facebook. I'll open the lower jaw. Here I have the lower open vertical. And here I have a lower jaw and centric relation, which is the original position. Notice the difference between the two and how much we've opened the vertical of the patient by. This is the occlusal plane that we have set. It gives us information about the curve of speed, curve of Wilson and the midline. And last but not least is our rectangular DOD three-dimensional smile design. And now these are all the new files that you need in order for you to start your full mouth rehabilitation I hope this video was helpful for you. Please, if you have any questions, you could send me an email to dr.samomar at gmail.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Dr. Sam Omar.